Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we diverted a disaster at the Clockwork Sun. Now, let's explore the Clockwork Sun a little bit. Obviously, we've been here before, but I'm, st I'm sure there's still some things to do. Plus, scavenging with the Dawn Rats is something I've never done before. A nervous face whispers to you from behind a bulkhead. Help us. We were brought here to build the Clockwork Sun. Lots of abandoned storerooms. Help us raid them and take your fill. Safety in numbers. The sun despises thieves, but its anger can't shine on all of us. Hmm. Wait, so rats? It says dawn rats. They're literally rats, right? So they helped build the Clockwork Sun. And then they just, I guess... I wonder if they've been staying in the storerooms and just living here. Send crew to scavenge for fuel. Send crew to scavenge for supplies. 60% chance of success. Hmm. They'd be risking a lot of my crew. Let's do it. It'll be interesting. There's actually a greater chance of getting fuel than supplies. I guess probably because fuel is worth less than supplies. Well, let's give our crew the best fighting chance. <laughs> let's try to scavenge for our fuel. Yes! Hours pass before your crew members return, rolling freshly unearthed barrels. The leader hands them to you with a carefully gloved hand. Mm, I'm sure their hand is turned to glass. Three fuel. Nice. Right. So what is there to do in here again? I remember we could visit the glass house and time got all weird and we could try to get some rolls of thirsty bombazine and stuff and adventure where we were told not to adventure. Hmm, I think that was... I don't know if that was the glass house. I might have been past the azimuth after the sequencer because I think the sequencer told us about that place. Quest access to the sun shattered dome. Yeah, that's the one. Ask the sequencer what's wrong. Have we done that before? The smile and tea he offers you are both weak. His usual enthusiasm has a frantic edge to it. Yeah, what's wrong? Oh, nothing. The sequencer avoids looking you in the eye. I just sometimes feel, feel very small in the great scheme of things. The rumbling beneath your feet is off-kilter, and you can hear distant machinery coughing like a flooded steam engine. The sun's light is dimmer than might be expected. With every unfortunate clank and racking whine, the sequencer winces as though struck. Just a reminder that the sequencers basically worship the clockwork sun. Hmm... What's your role on the sun? I'm sure we've done this before. I just want to see if anything different is here. Yeah, nothing different. Let's go into the sun shattered dome. State of your suit quality is now four. Right, it goes down as we go further in. Investigate the carousel. You come upon what looks like a glittering gold carousel, but instead of horses, it features glass bottles as tall as you. They're each filled with a near impenetrable liquid, and within, dark shapes writhe sluggishly. What the fuck? Let's investigate. Oof. Brushing aside glitter dust, you discover a label on the carousel's base. Tempest Prognosticator. Each bottle is similarly labeled philosopher. Something roils through the glass. You study the controls to no avail. You pull some levers at random and nothing happens. You attempt to pull one of the bottles free, but it's moored far too firmly. Eventually you're forced to give up and move on. Suits damaged, gain five tear. You find your wrath blocked by a tangle of bleached white foliage. The Shalimar Garden exploded from its greenhouse long ago, feeding furiously on the sun's light until it swelled to a jungle. I think we were told to avoid the garden, but... Nah. 67% chance of success. Let's do it. The light has deprived these plants. The dazzled sequencer warned you away from here. <laughs> Part of
partial success. Acid roses, predatory daffodils, snapping tulips with a lamprey with lamprey mouths, specimens imported decades ago from old London, the kind of common flowers that might be found at a street florist's, but bone white and deadly. Your crew hacks through them all, leaving a swath of slaughtered jungle in your wake. After much sweat and panic, you come upon one of the Shalimar's treasures hidden in a tangle of pale weeds, an oyster shell encrusted with diamonds. As you approach it, a thorn vine lashes out from the undergrowth and entwines your arm. Mm, abandon the treasure, call my crew for help, or fight the vine off myself. Mm. Call to your crew for help. They're shaken and exhausted. Hopefully they can handle one more battle. And I just lost a buddy. Blades descend on the vine again and again, but only some fibers snap. More vines whip from the bushes. One of your crew is dragged screaming out of sight. Finally, the vine holding you breaks. Your crew retreat, dragging you with, with them. Okay, so I gain nothing from that. <laughs> I should have just ran away at the beginning. Do I want to explore the Shalimar again? I mean, if I've been warned away from there, then there's probably something good in there, right? Go again. Full success. Uh, you come up on one of the... Sh um, did I say sh Shalimar before? Shamalar. You come upon one of the Shamalar's treasures, hidden in a tangle of pale weeds. Mm -hmm. The vegetation has already reclaimed the path behind you. Sighing, you order your crew to resume their work. Ah, oh, gain 250 sovereigns. Um. Yes, yeah, so our suit's not doing so well. Hmm. Let's return to safety. A figure in a yellow collared protective suit is delivering a sing song sermon to mostly empty pews. Oh, that's the sequencer. Okay, let's leave. That's enough of that. Let's visit the glass house. There's a dozen signs warning you to stay away, each more insistent than the last. The engineers shout, but they're too busy to stop you. That's where the prisoners were, right? Uh, yeah, repurposed old prisoners. Is there anything I can do here? speak with them. They either scream or sing. You may not get anything halfway lucid from them. 34% chance. Ah, damn. I think it just gained a lot of terror. Not just five, but it's adding up. I think we've seen this before. Hurry away from this place. Okay, we are done with the clockwork sun. So, we do need to bring... Um, the steward, a bunch of hours, I think three at a time, to help them try to fix the sun before it explodes. I guess I'll just buy as many of these crates as I can, since they're a bargain. And then just head back to London and grab as many hours as I have stored in my bank. Yeah. Okay, I'll meet you back at London. Oh, hello. There's another light over there, too. I don't know what it is. Oh, a dreadnought. Oh, shit. Oh, they hate each other. Good. to shoot again. Ooh, recover the glass for a pane of stained glass. I do have the room now. Or random treasure. Recover the glass. Man! Did I lose another crew? I didn't, thankfully. The chambers of the dreadnought have become an extended death trap. Slivers of glass fall from the ceilings. Vitrified walls shatter as you pass, exposing you to the sky in its wind-blown shards. You're forced to turn back, with only a few larger fragments that might fetch some sovereigns at port.
Oh, that was a nice shot. Oh, hey, another one. Damn. Another icy buddy. They're not a buddy. Icy enemy. Unlicensed chart. Unlicensed chart. Shit, shit, shit. Come on. Oh, okay, avoided most of it. Love that sound. Mm, this will make me gain terror in addition to any other discoveries you make. Well, I really can't take more terror. <laughs> Try to recover a pane of stained glass. Partial success? Okay. Clad in your sky suits, you and several crew locate a wide section of glass contamination on the dreadnought's underbelly. But as you gingerly pry it free, hairline fractures begin to spread across it. The hole groans. Your crew panic. Now, forget the glass. It's not worth it. Abandon the attempt. Uh, attempt and get everyone to safety. And I can't tear anyway. You scramble to safety as the hole splits and the glass shatters into a spray of razor-sharp shards. You retrieve some larger pieces, which might fetch a few sovereigns in port, and retreat, retreat to your engine with your lives and a story of a close call. 99 sovereigns, tale of terror, and 5 more horror. I'm at 82%. Hmm. Disturbance in the night. You wake suddenly. Investigated noise from the galley. You can hear voices and the scent of bacon is mouth-watering. You creep through the dark carriages of your engine following the smell of sizzling meat. The galley door is open, and light washes out from inside. Peering in, you spy half a dozen of your crew setting up a midnight feast, replete with blankets, wine, and costumes. They raise their mugs and toast to Lord Langley. Man, everyone's obsessed with Lord Langley, including me. A signaler spies you as he lowers your glass. Shit, Captain's here. Yeah, let's join the feast. We'll be good for morale, if not your waistline. Reduce my terror. Shocked faces turn to delight. Space is made for you on the blanket, and wide poured into a much battered mug. Totes is made in your honor. You only leave the galley after many hours, having had your fill of food and conversation. Oh my god. Give me a break. Mm, frozen corpse spinning past the window. Jettison some... Well, hmm. Maybe I should recover the body and transport it for burial. I'm at zero nightmares. You know, Elizabeth's used to nightmares. It's fine. My terror is extraordinarily high. Uh, let's do that. It's gonna be poor company, but that's worth it. At London. Let's see if the signalman is done. They are. The signalman has something for you. His expression is almost cheerful. Unwelcome advice. I told them it was a stupid idea, which it was, he says, clutching his bowler hat in his hands. I asked to see their accounts. Turns out they've been getting fleeced for years. Lawyers, consultants, architects, the works. I was the first to tell them straight. They gave me my pay and threw me out of my ear. <laughs> he looks around the station. I think it's probably a good idea to leave London for a bit. 250 sovereigns. Okay, I was hoping that would give me a cryptic benefactor, but I'll take it. Good try. Let's repair our ship. Uh, no, no, this. Fully repair. Let's see how many people we can recruit. Oh, has not enough time passed? Yeah, hasn't been 15 days. Okay. Do I want to put this signaler back on? Um, what do I get with you? Academia, two irons, six veils. Six mirrors, two veils. Get, get a bit more villainy and gloomy guidance. Mm. Well, I'm going to have less veils, but I did just 
level up with a veil as a main skill, so I want to know if I'm going to be below 75 if I switch. No. No, we're definitely not below 75. Okay. Yeah, let's go with him. Because we don't really need much more veils that much. I mean, it's always good to have above 75 just for... Um, you know, skill checks where it gives you a percentage chance of success. But in terms of equipment you can use, looks like the highest skill check is 75. So for that, anything above 75 doesn't matter. I'm not that far away from 75 mirrors. Could I get there? I have two more levels to spend. Uh, not right now, but I mean two more levels that I could potentially get. And after that, I don't think I can level up anymore. I probably should focus on mirrors. I think I'll do that. Right, so the steward wants hours, huh? Turns out I had 29 hours stored in my bank, so I'm going to bring 15. Just five groups of three. Yeah, let's go. A bully's acre. Ooh, I can investigate a mysterious gleaming. 75% chance of success. Success. Is it Navaratine? Oh, it's an otherworldly artifact. It's a glass hand, perfect in every detail. Oh, even with a success, oh, I gained 15 terror. Shit. No, the turn back the other way. Okay, now let me get in there without bothering the coffins. Because that would be very rude. Mm, I've got one hold space now. Yeah, try to get some bronze wood. Success. Hello again, Clockwork Sun. This is the Steward's Sanctum. You have hours for her. Hopefully I can give her hours a bunch of times and not just like once and then come back later. Her face lights up briefly. She grins, teeth glinting. Still not enough, she mutters, counting coins into your palm. But a start. She must still have access to funding, though you can't imagine from where. The Empire can't approve of her unsanctioned meddling with her crowning achievement. You've gained one desperate measures. New total deliver, three barrels of unseasoned hours to the broken steward on the clockwork sun. 400 sovereigns? Damn, that is good. Uh, yeah, they'll take more right now. Good. Still not enough. Um, yep. Gained another desperate measures, another 400 sovereigns. I'm gonna get a shit ton of money. Um, new total, you have brought enough hours to the steward. Oh! Although, she said still not enough, which is weird. Yeah, okay, can't give him any more. Something is wrong. A smile twitches on the steward's face. She cuts herself on her teeth. Her chin is streaked with blood. What is going on? Enlightenment. I wasted half my life down here, she says. Last night I finally gave up. The sun could not be fixed, I decided. Albion would not survive. But in my lowest moment, sunlight filled my mind and I knew my error. How could I have hoped to fix perfection? A sun cannot die. A god cannot break. There's no such thing as dusk. You notice the densely packed scrawl on the walls behind her? Two words repeated thousands of times, often misspelled, eventually running into a single garbled stream. The similarly dazzled steward smiles a little too brightly. Care to join me in a hymn? 
Uh, sure. Into Searing Enigma. Wow. Okay, so they are now the similarly dazzled steward. The steward abandons her toolbox and heads for the stairs. Engineers greet her, return joyfully, but a cold silence settles when she begins sermonizing. The sun cannot break, she insists. It breaks near twice a week these days, shouts a burly engineer. What are you talking about? Neither your work nor mine is needed any longer, she replies, turning to head back down into the vaults. The engineer's outraged whispers become a clamor. Okay, well, I fed the steward's obsession and they appear to have broken. Shit. Rally the engineers, 38% chance of success, or just leave them alone. They're babbling over each other and you can sense the rising panic. They need someone to step in, but the steward is already gone. I mean, we gotta try, right? Failure, surprise. I gained 3,000 experience. You try to shout over the tumult, but your voice is just one among many. What will we do without her? I don't know the first thing about... Already bad? It's just going to get worse. She helped design the bloody thing. Never thought she'd... I need to get back to London. Get my family to the reach. In the distance, a colossal cog grinds to a halt. Something snaps with a noise like gunshot. Still arguing, the engineers rush to deal with it. And the strength of the sun is back down to zero, which is where it was for a while until I turned in a prospect here, which gained me some strength of the sun. Okay. So, what's going on down there, steward? Descend to the Terpiscore Vault. The vault below are safer than the surface, protected by a dozen layers of stained glass. Score revolt. Beneath the machine bristling surface, you find a ring of nine vault doors, each engraved with the name of a classical muse. Eight are locked and barred, behind signs saying things like vacant or under renovation, or in one case, unfortunate chronological discrepancies. The ninth, marked Terpiscore, is the only door open to you. When you enter, your footsteps ring through dusty barracks and abandoned canteens. These are the engineer's quarters, but they're all on the surface working, except one. You can hear her singing before you see her. The similarly dazzled steward greets you with a guileless smile and asks you to join her in a song of praise. And speak to them. She spends her days singing and smiling. She's tiny and elderly and good-natured, and absolutely nothing like the person you once knew. She makes you tea and chats about her ailments and the glory of the sun. Oh, and one more thing. No more literature for the engineers. They need to focus on their sermons with the sequencer. So I give them so many hours that they're now elderly. Really not sure I should have done that. Maybe I should have tried to talk him out of it. Is that it? Shit, they're just broken. That's it. Is there nothing else I can do? Uh, what about the new sequencer? Ask what's wrong. I mean, it's going to be the same as before. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's all the same. I feel like I should be able to do something. What do I do? The glass house? The prisoners? That's not going to do anything. Yeah, hurry away from there. Shit. And still it spins. 
And what they said about a, the sun being a god and gods or the sun can't die, I mean, that's bullshit. There's dead suns all over the fucking place. What the hell are they talking about? They most certainly can die. I, f <sighs> I feel like I should do something, but I don't know what. I saw in, I think, a trailer for this game, I swear I saw a ship traveling into the center of the clockwork sun, like there was a way past all the gears and cogs to somehow get to the center. I don't know if that's really possible, if that's still possible, it could have changed, would that do anything? I don't know, but like, should I try to get to the center of the sun? I'm already pretty high on terror, but... Uh, let me poke around. How close can I get to this thing again? It's so scary because it looks like everything's going to hit me, but most of these are not on my level. Um, okay, this, this is on my level. Oh, I think... Oh god, I think it's that. I think that you can go through? Or this too? Or can I just go over the whole thing? Shit, I can just go over the whole thing. Should I go there? My terror's so high. I'm gonna do it. Okay, nothing happened, thank god. Oh, you can see it's like sparking right there on the gear. Okay, let's get the fuck out of here. I'm really glad nothing happened. <laughs> Ooh. Hmm. Ah. <sighs> quieter and quieter and quieter. I want to go find the parliament. The parliament's somewhere down here. I even heard the bells while I was coming to the Clockwork Sun. The bell from the huge clock tower, I think? Like, chiming... If you, if you hear the chiming, it's supposed to be good luck, if you remember that thing. Let's go back to London first, though. Because I know there's a prospect for the Parliament. Not a very good one, but it's something. I'll meet you back at London. Hmm, wasted time. We got a split open barrel of unseasoned hours. Just throughout the whole thing. Is that that lower tear? Nope. Just means nothing bad happened. Back at London, let's go on a recruitment mission. Gain four. Five crew. Nice. 16 out of 19. Repaired my hole as well and bought some supplies, put stuff away in the bank, all that good stuff. Man, I almost want to go back to the sun again. I'm not, but I almost want to do it because there's two prospects here for it. Literature for the sun, which the steward explicitly told me don't give the engineers literature. So I'm kind of curious if that would do something. And then also one for tea for the sun. So that'd be pretty damn lucrative, but my terror is already high, and it... I gain a lot of terror going over there. So, no thanks. I will take this one, though, just to kind of reserve it and make sure it doesn't disappear. And I suppose I can take the other one as well. Like, oh man, I wanted to do this special prospect, and I could... I'll keep it. This one for the caged catches for Kirillin. I'll keep that. I'll get rid of the bronze wood for Port Prosper, although this is extremely lucrative. Seven bronze wood. But I'm not planning to go there anytime soon. Let's abandon it and grab this. Right. So the Parliament wants three munitions. I've got those loaded up. Let's go to the Parliament. The Hour of the Wolf. Doubts are preying on me. Indoor. Success with a 27%. Nice. Questions worry at you, chasing away sleep. Later, there is a knock at your door. One of your officers is outside. Comrade, we need you. Duty calls. The doubts must wait. Alright, heading into the unknown now. 
Should be somewhere down here. I think it's south southwest, like here. It's a treasure over here. Nightmares, you're not alone. Tonight the stars are hard and cold. Sleep eludes you. Go for a walk. Corridors are quiet, save for the thrum of busy pipes. Passing along an outer corridor, you're surprised by a face. Pressed against the outside of a window. The frosted jowls. The bristly mustache. It is the same corpse that drifted into the path of your vessel. Hmm... So, ignore it. Steer into a passing scree squall, which should pelt it off but hurt the engine or board up the window. <laughs> the cheek of the thing, peeking and prying. Dirty little ghost. <laughs> Look at this, surely the winds will blow it off. Who knows, maybe it's even good luck, like a mascot. <laughs> no. Hmm. Well, my terror is extremely high, so you know what? Ignore it. Oh, that reduced it so much. See? The carmine hue of the stained glass gives the face a ruddy cast, like an uncle who's overindulged at Christmas. <laughs> Over the next few days, you see the face on several other occasions, always at a different window. No one else on the crew mentions it. Hmm... I wonder if they don't mention it because they don't see it. Maybe only I can see it. That's creepy as hell. Oh wait, that wasn't the treasure. Why am I turning around? The treasure was not a creepy ghost spying on me. A clock chimes in the distance. Parliament, a stoker says, in tones caught between contempt and wistfulness. Very embery out here. of obstacles here. Hmm, something ghastly. Probably one of those time bubbles. Failed work world sprawls here, rusting uselessly. Ooh. Hmm. Okay, yeah. I'm in good shape. Whoops. I can take on a curator, if one appears. Take it. good. Oh, that sounds like the storm that speaks down there. Where 
is the Parliament. Let me just check. It is south southwest, right? Oh, it just says south. Oh, okay. Well, I'm probably going the wrong way then. Turn around. Almost want to go into the storm. Wait, that's not the storm that speaks. What in the fuck is that? What the hell is that? I've never found that before. Jesus. I mean, it's very cylindrical. Or circular? Or, or, orbial? <laughs> yeah, uh, point is, it might be a sun. Maybe. Maybe not right now. be very close to it. Look at this thing. These look like blades. Like these are, these two things are like huge teeth. Now oh, look at all the movement. This up above moving, that down below moving. Oh, hello. Break into the captain's cabin. Unseasoned hours. There it is. Yeah, it's definitely some sort of tearing apart digging machine thing. And those are definitely teeth that revolve around it. is a pretty good place to end this episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm going to try to pass some laws at the floating parliament. 